And because Jesus is who he is, he wanted to feed them. So he asked Philip, who was one of his disciples, he says to Philip, you know, can you go to the store and go get, you know, some bread for these people to eat? And Philip said, well, we don't have enough money to even buy food to feed all these people. We just don't have it. Mm -hmm. Sound like a little bit of doubt to me. Yeah. And then Andrew, who was another disciple, uh -huh. he announces, hey, Jesus, look, there's a boy here with five loaves of barley bread and two little fish. But that's not enough for so many people. Right. In the New Living Translation, it says, there's a young boy here with five barley loaves and two fish. But what good is that with the huge cracker? Mm. Mm. So the scripture tells us that Jesus told the folk to sit down. He took the bread and he gave thanks. And he distributed the bread to everyone. Uh -huh. He did the same with the fish. Right. He gave them as much as they wanted. Now we've heard the story of this account before, I'm sure. And it's a great miracle, as all of Jesus' miracles are great and remarkable. Yes. Mm -hmm. We still marvel at it even today. There's songs about it. People have preached sermons about it. But I want to focus in on what or who I would consider to be the main character. And that's the boy with the lunch. Sometimes we don't consider the little boy with the lunch. That's right. Now, there's an adjective that's used in the Amplified Version to describe this boy, and it says that he's a little boy. Uh -huh. He's little. He's insignificant. Yeah. He's diminutive. He's small. Uh -huh. Perhaps he's the kind of kid that would get lost in the crowd. He's kind of obscure unnoticeable. He can even be overlooked, this little boy. But this little boy came with something. We don't know where he got it from, probably from his mother, because she knew he was going out to see Jesus in this big crowd. And she said, here, take a little something with you. And he had five barley loaves. And it's interesting that the scripture tells us that they're barley loaves. It doesn't say what kind of bread it was. He just says it's barley loaves. Yes. And these are not loaves that you see in the supermarket, you know, with like 15 or 16 slices of bread in it. Right. These were like little cakes. Right. And they were made out of barley. Uh -huh. I never had anything made out of barley. Mm -hmm. It don't even sound good, barley. <laughs> <laughs> but barley was the food of the poor. Mm -hmm. The lower class people ate bread made out of barley. Not the wheat, but the barley. Mm -hmm. Because the barley was used a lot of times to feed the animals. Mm -hmm. yeah. So this little boy has five barley loaves. Little common loaves. And he had some little fish. They were probably kind of dried out, like little sardines. I don't eat sardines. Anybody have ate sardines? I mean, I'm not, you know, I'm not hurting, hate, hating on you, but that looks like something I don't want to eat. But to each his own. <laughs> so this little boy had these little sardines, these tiny little sardines, because you could just pop them in your mouth, I guess. And these little barley, these little barley breads. And it's, you know, you could call it a happy meal. <laughs> but it was so, you know, it looked like really an unhappy meal. Uh, okay, okay. So Andrew, one of the disciples now, he looks at the barley bread and the fish and he says, well, what good is that? Meanwhile, he didn't come with anything, but I mean, like, he says, well, what good is that? That can't feed all these people. So Andrew, one of the disciples, one of the followers of Jesus, the big guy, he disses the little boy. He disses his little lunch. He scoffed at it. Uh -huh. I wonder how the little boy felt. You know, mommy made me this lunch and now, you know, like you dissing me. But the boy knew he had a poor man's 
lunch, and the disciples scoffed at him. So the boy, the little boy, was kind of put down by the disciple. Well, that's the best he had. That's all he had. Some scholars say he might have had that, that food with him because he wanted to sell it, maybe to make a little money amongst the crowd. I'm not sure. But what does Jesus do? Jesus told the folk to sit down. Now, I want you to kind of think about this and kind of put this picture in your eye. You're in Fort Greene Park. Those of us that are from Brooklyn, those of you who are from someplace else, think about a park. The folk have come to see Jesus. And they came with purpose. They came to be healed because they heard that Jesus was healing people. So this whole group of people, this whole crowd, comes to the park. Right. And they're standing around. You know how we do in the park. Yeah. Get the picture in your mind. People were probably walking around. Yeah. Hey, how you doing? I ain't seen you in a long time. What you doing here? Well, I came to get healed, man. I heard that Jesus is out here. I got this pain in my knee. And I'm just here to get healed. What you here for? Yeah, me too. This is what they were probably talking about in the park. There's 5,000 of them. And Jesus is standing there and he tells the disciples, tell the folk to just sit down. So they sat down. But the people were restless. They probably say, well, when is the healing going to start? You know, what's going on here? Jesus takes the balmy bread and he gives thanks for it. He doesn't diss it. He doesn't say this is not enough. But he gives thanks for that which he had in his hand. And after he gave thanks to God, he told the disciples, now give it out. So the disciples started giving out the ball of bread and the fish. And they gave it out, and they kept giving 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 it out. Yes. What happened was, they turned the unhappy meal into an all-you-can-eat buffet. Go ahead. Yes. yes. And you know how people go when they're at the buffet? Yeah. You've been to the buffet. Yeah. I can tell you all been to the buffet. Yeah. I was at a buffet once out in Long Island, and they had these crab legs. I, had something else. I, don't, I eat a lot of stuff. I don't eat these crab legs. Mm -hmm. And they, they put out all these crab legs, and you know, the, the thing, in the, the all-you-can-eat buffet, yeah. and this woman, she must have took every leg that there was and put them on her plate. I don't know how she intended to eat all the crab legs, but that's what she did. So much so that the maiden D had to stand there and kind of watch and kind of police the people as they were taking these crab legs. Well, this is what was going on in, in, in the park here where Jesus was. Because they were just giving it out, just giving it out, just giving it out. And it's something everyone ate. Amen. So they were full. Amen. They were full. They were belching and carrying on. <laughs> the crowd was fed. Yeah. And there was nothing left over. Mm -hmm. Now we're taught in the word that first comes the natural and then the spiritual. Mm -hmm. So if we look at this account, this miracle through spiritual, a spiritual lens, we can see many lessons regarding the significance of the bread, Jesus' power and the crowd, etc. But I want to hone in on just one aspect of the barley bread and the little fish and what that says to us with respect to what we have to offer for Jesus to use. Yes. Uh -huh. Sometimes we don't regard what we have to offer to God as valuable. Mm -hmm. Or perhaps others don't regard what we have to offer to God as valuable. Yes. Like Andrew, the disciple, who dissed the barley bread and the fish. Uh -huh. We all have been given gifts, and talents, and resources, and passions that can be used by God. Yes. Yes. But they can be treated or regarded as not good enough. Uh -huh. For example, you're in a group and you're called upon to pray aloud. Pray aloud now. Trepidation and fear might set in because you heard other people pray and you feel that you're not eloquent. 
Your vocabulary is not that vast. You don't pray like Brother Henry or Sister Pauline, uh -huh. who are fiery. Uh -huh. And you stutter sometimes. Yeah. So you feel stifled. Yeah, or you're asked to give a testimony about the goodness of the Lord in your life. Yeah. And you heard other testimonies of healing from cancer, deliverance from drugs, surviving a car crash. Uh -huh. Your testimony is not that dramatic. Uh -huh. It won't say much about God. It's, it's not all that. That's how you might feel. But I want to encourage you today yeah. that what God has given you yes. is more than enough to bless yeah. others. Yeah. You don't know how your prayer or your testimony yeah. might affect someone's life. Yeah. And the far-reaching effect it may have on perhaps hundreds of people. Yeah. You don't know. Yeah. After I got saved, I was listening to a song on, the, on a little cassette at my sister's house. A little, um, it, was, it wasn't an A track, it was the other kind of cassette. And it was a song that was sung by a young Caucasian brother. And the only, the only instrument he had was a guitar. Uh -huh. And he was singing this song, and the title is, This is What the Lord Will Do For You. Mm -hmm. And I listened to that simple song, which is only about three minutes long. Uh -huh. Whew, I can remember it right now. Yes. It just changed my life. It had such an impact on my life. And several years hence, I got ordained. Amen. 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 And I'm preaching the gospel. And perhaps, and I hope many people have been inspired or touched or saved as a result. But in that three minute song that that brother sang, it just touched me. Yes. And it was like, I'm not going to say that this song was like a barley loaf, but it might have been considered in some people's eyes as corny. Mm -hmm. That's a corny sounding song. But it was so impactful because it was anointed by God to reach me. Amen. And I'm sure it reached others. As a matter of fact, I heard that song back in 1975. Mm. And I always kept that tune in my head. I never heard it again until I went to YouTube. And I put the title in, and that song popped up, and I played it, and I cried. And I cried and I cried. Because I remember yeah. what had been sown into my life just through that song. So we got to remember that it's not about us. It's not about us. It's about what God wants to do through a willing us, a surrendered us, a trusting us, a faith filled us. A here, Lord, here's my garden bread. Yes. Here's my little fish, yes. kind of us. Uh -huh. Bless it, use it, multiply it yes. to feed your people spiritually uh -huh. all that they can eat. Yes. 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 Ephesians 3.20 in the King James Version says, Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, yes. above all that we can ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Uh -huh. Abundantly, it's a Greek word which I can't pronounce, uh -huh. but it means super abundance, uh -huh. excessive, excessive, overflowing, yes. surplus, yes. over and above, uh -huh. more than enough, profuse, yes. extraordinary, yes. more than sufficient. That's what God can do with what you offer to Him. Yes. You may not see it. You may never see it. Just like the wind. You don't see the wind, where it goes or what it does a lot of times. But when you surrender yourself to the Lord and offer to Him that which He's given to you, as small or insignificant as you might think it is, once God blesses it and it goes out there, it's the power of God that works in that which you offer to Him. Yes. The Holy Ghost power is what I'm talking about. Resurrection power is what I'm talking about. Overcoming power. Salvation power. 
Yeah. That's what's in what God has put in you. Yes, and I don't want anyone to leave here a lot off thinking that you're not enough. Mm -hmm. God can't use me. Yeah. It's not about you. We need to say that. It's not about me. Right. Maybe we can all say that right now. It's not about, about me. me. It's about you, Lord. Right. And about the power of God that's working in me. Yeah. So that I would be able to minister to people, even if it's unbeknownst to me, yeah. all that they can eat. Yeah. The men of God are going out in a little while. Yeah. And the men of God are going out in the power of God. Yeah. Yeah. They're going out to pray for this community. Yes. They're going out as a witness to who God is in each and every man's life. Yes. Regardless of how you think, oh, it's, it's, you know, I'm just, I'm not. No. You may think you're Arlene. You may think you're a sardine, but you're not. Uh -huh. Not in God. The men of God are going out in a little while. They're going out to tear down strongholds. Yes. They're going out to let somebody know about Jesus. Yeah. Maybe they're not going out to give testimonies, but their very life is a testimony out here in this community yeah. because people know who you are. Yeah. Maybe they knew what you were yeah. before Jesus. And now they see you as men of God standing strong, praying for this community. Yeah. Glory be to God. Glory. What's going to come out of this effort when these men go out, these strong men of God from the church of the open door, they go out and they pray over this community, like I said before, tearing down strongholds, coming against the enemy, coming against strife, coming against this uh, death, coming against violence, coming, but they're going out in the power of Almighty God. And we go forward. To what's going to happen. Yeah. Like I said, we may not see it right away, but the people who are in the window, the people that are walking by, will be receiving, and after a while, it'll be all they can eat. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. Do not discount what you think or what other people may think is a barley loaf in your life. Because once it's handed over to Jesus and he blesses it and he multiplies it, he'll do what he intended it to do. Amen? Amen. 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 Father God, in the name of the Lord Jesus, I thank you and I praise you for your word. I thank you for showing us, oh God, just what a big, mighty God you are. How you can use even the least of us, the little of us, even we're not we're little, maybe in stature or maybe in our minds, but God, we're big in you. As Deacon Lyon said, he said, Reverend Thompson always comes big. Well, if I come big, I come big in God. Hallelujah. I don't mind being big in God. Hallelujah. Oh God, we serve a mighty God. We serve a God who's more than enough. We see a God who can give each and every, every one of us all we can eat. He's all sufficient. And if there's anybody under the sound of my voice who doesn't know Jesus as Lord and Savior, I encourage you today to just say to the Lord, God, I surrender. I'm living this life and I'm living it under my own guidance and it's not working out. God, I know I'm a sinner. I know that I need you in my life to turn me around. So Lord, right now I surrender to you when I receive Jesus Christ in my life as Lord and Savior. And we do that by faith. If you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord, you will be saved. Period. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord God. I thank you, God. I thank you. I'm going to turn this mic back over to Deacon Lyons, who's going to give further directions to the men as they proceed out. And when they come back, then we will have our offering and we will have communion together. Amen. 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 Take your lives. Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thompson, always come big. Yeah. Because she served a big God. She served a mighty God. And she served a great God. Give 
ain't no other way to come when you serve a God like that. Amen? Amen. And our pastor gave us direction. Our pastor gave us leadership. And he gave us skills. Yes. So because the pastor is not here, we're not going to neglect our duties and responsibility. Right. Man, we going out. That's right. We walk in the neighborhood. Yeah. We're going to pray for people. We're going to let them know that the church in the open door is here in the house. And God is still in control. In spite of everything, God is still here. Yeah. So what, this is how we're going to proceed. We're going to go out to the van. We're going to have Deacon Brickhouse to come and give us a prayer for the community while we move. We want to ask the ladies to stay here. We'll be right back. We want everyone else, all men, to come. Deacon Audrey is going to be our driver. You can't get a better driver than him. And he's going to take us. Diana, our um, film master, is coming with us. And we're going to go to Deacon Audrey's house. Yes. And we're going to pray for him. Yes. Amen. 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 Amen.